Hello boys and girls, Pearl of Wisdom here from PayPal Picks and the Pearl of Wisdom Show. And uh, you know all my trade videos, right? Everybody in the land knows this by now. We did Carlson, we just did Carlson, we just did Horvat in the Frolic. Ooh. Wow, people love getting traded, getting players traded, especially when you talk about return. It's fun. It's fun times. Some people get like really, really offended. And uh, that's all right. If you're, if you're a person that does that, like gets offended pretty much at all, probably not for you. <laughs> probably not. Uh, today we're going to be doing Timu Meyer. And this is going to get the popcorn out, boys and girls. This is going to take a bit because... There is crazy amounts of things to unpack about Timu Meyer. First, we're going to look at an article <clears throat> that basically gives us an indication that he will be moved. But, and it sounds cool. I mean, this is a 35 goal scoring winger. He's only 26 years old, six foot 210. You know, he doesn't shy away. From physical contact he's not like super aggressive but he doesn't shy away he's got speed he's got skill all of that sounds lovely right six million dollars a year is his cap hit but he's a restricted free agent and Wilson the Wilson the manager before for San Jose Sharks who Timo Meyer plays for Gave him a $10 million final year, which means, if you don't know this already, if you're a restricted free agent, the team that is, the reason why you're restricted is you can't just go wherever you want. The team has an option to give you a qualifying offer. And that all qualifying offer has to be 10% of your final year salary, which would be $11 million. Dollars. Yes, that's right. Now, you don't have, you can restructure the rest of the contract to bring that AAV down for the length of the contract, which is going to be very valuable to know as we go to each team that may be interested. I'll tell you, there's a crap load of teams that are going to be interested in a 26 year old beast of a winger that can score 35 to 40 goals. Tons. But we all know about cap room and we all know about all of that, right? So that's why. Um, and I do this, by the way, on the fly, one take. I don't know if you know this. On the fly, one take. No editing, none of that nonsense. We just get down to the meat. So sometimes when I'm doing this, I may change my mind as I'm even talking. <laughs> that's, but I do this for discussion points. So comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. First, you better subscribe, right? Subscribe to the channel. I only need three more for a thousand. That's a big day in, in YouTube land. It's a lot of frolic in the land when, when somebody hits that. It's just like, ooh. So, sub yourself up and let's get part of it. Okay. We're going to look at a, uh article, like I said. We're going to look at Timo Meyer. Um, we kind of will look at what San Jose wants, but in this situation, it's just going to be like, they're going to hope that they can get what they can get as we will see. And then we're going to look at teams that will be interested, why and how they would be able to accomplish such a feat. All right. First, the article. All part of uh, Steel Flyers All Sports Network, by the way. Go check out that website. If you like all sports, all teams to do with those sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. All right. San Jose Sharks. Forward Timur Meyer isn't a pending unrestricted free agent, but his expensive qualifying offer. He's making $10 million this season on a cap hit of just $6 million, as we just talked about. So that um, and the current state of Sharks of the Sharks 7-11-3 leads one to believe that his time with San Jose could be coming to an end. Sarah Valley writes, and that's from uh, Daily Face Off. He's great. Go check him out. That it's unlikely that the Sharks commit to a long-term pact with Meyer, meaning a trade could be most likely outcome for the future in Teal. 
According to Savelli Myers, starting value on the trade market is considerably less than Alex Dabrinkat's deal. And that's why I wanted to look at this. There's several articles out there about Meyer being traded, but I like this one because you get a little inside on what the return could be. And it is significantly less than the deal the Blackhawks got for, for Dabrinkat which was three draft picks, and one of them being the seventh overall. Now, that doesn't tell us everything, but what is significantly less? It would lead me to believe at least that a late round first would do it, for sure. Maybe less than that. I don't know. We're going to look at some teams. Like A lot of teams are going to have to give up players to go with this in order to do it. And I'm, I think in San Jose's position right now, they're sitting there going, Okay, we're not going to be signing Timu. Uh, the cap is going to be difficult. Let's just, if we can even get, you know what I mean? They're in the, if we can even get type thing, which is sad for a guy of his incredible skill level, but wonderful for some team out there that's willing to take the jump on him. So let's look at Timu Meyer. Timu Meyer is... Here we see his contract, $10 million base salary this year. Qualifying offer is going to be $11 million. Uh, six foot, 210, 210 pounds, six feet. He's only 26 years old. Young guy. Everybody's looking for big young wingers, right? Yeah. Uh, that can score. 30 goals. He's already did 35 point a game. On a 40-goal pace this year, hitting his prime. I mean, lots of meat to love, lots to love about Timu Meyer, no doubt about that. But how do we do it with this cap space and everything? Um, well, we're going to look at some of those things. The first two teams we're going to look at are different than the rest. These two teams are teams that have cap space that may think that they it's worth it for them to pull a team of Meyer out at 26 years old to speed up their rebuild, okay? Um, put down in the comment section any other teams you think are like this. I looked at the other ones, and I didn't think that they fit the bill, but maybe you can convince me otherwise. All right, Anaheim Ducks. The Anaheim Ducks, first of all, okay, the reason why the Anaheim Ducks might be in this on a level of the organization in general. The Anaheim Ducks are really, really, really tried not to rebuild. They didn't want to rebuild. They're in a market that is not a traditional hockey market. It's difficult to get sponsorship or owners. It's all about dollars and cents, man. It's all about dollars and cents. And... If they can speed up a rebuild, I think they would be doing their best to do so. Now, next year and this year, they have they have 14 million right now and 42 million next year. Now they have tons of players to sign. I believe, yeah, like pretty much their whole defense. Uh, John Klingberg might not be back. They could trade him. They have tons of options here, and they have tons of cap space. So the really the only question in this deal is is Timu Meyer a piece that they think is going to make their team better, speed up their rebuild, and all of those sort of things like that. Assuming that's what they want to do. Okay? So the first question is, is he going to make the team better? Of course he's going to make the team better. <laughs> he's a 40 goal scorer. Um, Troy Terry is going to need a contract coming up as well. And that's the thing. So is Trevor Zegers. And if anything were to be a problem here, it's how does giving, say, get bringing in Timu Meyer, signing him to a long-term contract where you start him at 11 million next year and then work out a contract where he gets less as the years go on to bring the cap space down because Honestly, I don't think anybody is going to sign him to a $10 million a year deal. I could be wrong here, but I don't think so. But if anybody was going to, possibly the Anaheim Ducks could do it. 
they could look at uh, they could look at their future and go, you know what, Trevor Zegras, uh, we're probably going to be signing him to somewhere in that area, and uh, Troy Terry would then already because Troy Terry's already scored forty goals, hasn't he? And he's twenty five years old. You'd have to sign him to a ten million dollar contract, really. You'd have two, so you'd have three players making ten million dollars plus or more. But you'd have a fantastic lineup. And you got guys coming off the books and you have young players coming up. I mean, you gotta tell me, Ducks fans, would you be would you consider something like this? Or do you just want to keep on waiting for the young players to come up in Anaheim? And let me tell you something right now. No, I'm not gonna tell you. You can tell me. See if you agree with me on this is a better way to put it. Let me tell you something. What am I telling you? You're fans, you know as much as I do. Uh Right. But there isn't a horrible, like, there isn't really too many players knocking on the door to come in for Anaheim yet. Really. So maybe you want to make this deal to speed it up. You're still not going to be spectacular. You're still going to be able to keep your draft picks. What's going to go back in return? And this is all contingent on the idea that Timu Meyer is willing to sign long-term with you, okay? Now, it's said in the article, as I'm sure you want, that it's the return is probably very likely going to be less than what the Dabrinka return is. For Anaheim, that, that could be a second-round pick and a player. I think that would do it. A second-round pick in 2023 and... Maybe like a Maxim Comtois. Another left winger back. And you got yourself a point a game, six foot two ten, forty goal scorer to add to your lineup as you keep on building here. I don't know, what do you think? What do you guys think, Ducks fans? Comment in the comment section, let me know. Subscribe to my channel. I think that's all it's gonna take. And yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have a big ticket player on your roster you know what eventually some of these players that you're trying to build up into your roster are going to be signing contracts like this and if any of them turn out to be like Timu Meyer, you'll be happier than heck and you gave up a second in calm 12. I personally do it I just when it comes to finding players that you already know are 40 goal scorers you can go to the draft keep on trying and I'm sure you'll find them but you're not giving up a first here. You're only giving up a second and Comtois, who's a, you know, he's a serviceable player, but let's face it, he's not. If, if you lose Comtois, it's not going to be the end of the world for your future. So I personally do it. Tell me what you think, Ducks fans. A second and Comtois or something of that nature might be all you need to do. Next, similar, Buffalo Sabres. Okay, the Buffalo Sabres, I think, it's not really least less likely, but they have cap space, Buffalo does. They've been rebuilding for far too long. <laughs> they, they did a rebuild on top of their rebuild already. Right, Buffalo? You know all about it. It's been rebuild after rebuild after rebuild. And they will have $31 million in cap space. Now, I know you got tons of people to sign. Um, you know, you're going to have to sign Middlestat down the road here. But, uh, and of course, Rasmus Dahlin is going to need another contract. I would, they probably are going to be looking to re sign Lyabushkin. Yogi Haru is going to need a raise. But even after all that, there should be room for a deal like this. So you have a choice, I think, if you're the Buffalo Sabres here. You, most, I know a lot of fans are going to be like, we don't need them. We're just going to let our kids grow and, uh, you know, stick with what we got and all that kind of stuff like that. Team of Meyer can play right or left wing, either side. So let me sell you on this idea, okay? You trade for him. He agrees. I want to go to Buffalo, up-and-coming team. Not going to be rebuilding for much longer. 
was very close on the precipice of becoming a, a regular playoff team, which with Anaheim might be a, can't really say that as much, and that might prevent him from wanting to sign long-term with you. But for Buffalo, what could you move in this deal? First of all, if you've been go back to the beginning and you can see an article where it says it's not going to cost what it, what they gave up for Debrinkat, which was a first and two and two uh, other draft picks, a very high first. So maybe a low first pick. And for Buffalo, what do you got? Not going to give up your 2023. Maybe your 2024 first. And that's it. Somebody like Olafson to make the cap work doesn't even need to be. Uh, that's that could be it. You might not even you could give Olafson and two seconds. Say Olafson and two seconds. You've got three sec uh, three second rounders in 2023, a 2023 second and a 2024 second. At this at this point, I think San Jose may consider something like that. Uh, you don't really need Victor Olofsson if you pick him up. Jason Paterka can play that spot. Olofsson's making more money. That helps you in the cap in the future. And you get Timu Meyer to play with Tage Thompson and Alex Tuck. Holy crap. That would be an amazing top line. Amazing. Better than Jeff Skinner. And he's going to cost less than Jeff Skinner as far as as you work out a deal to bring the cap down. There's no way you're signing him to eleven million dollars a year. I mean, he's not he's not that type. He's not that superstar good up there. But you could sign a deal for seven or eight years and bring the salary per year down so he's right around eight million dollars a year. I know you got to sign Tage Thompson. All of those things like that. But you're going to have to sign these young players eventually anyways. And for me, if I'm Buffalo, I think you're ready, man. I don't think you need to wait for the young players to come up anymore. You got Jack Quinn. You got Paterka. You got Alex Tuck. You got Tage Thompson. Um, maybe, you know, Casey Middlestad. You got, you got, you're stacked. Defense is stacked. Just needs to percolate and get a little better. A guy like Timo Meyer in this top nine would be unbelievable. And if all if all it costs me is a 2024 first, maybe even protected, I'm doing it. Even if it costs Olafson too, I'm doing it. Are you doing it? Tell me in the comment section, Buffalo Sabres fans, if you would like to do that or not. I know there's a lot of people. It seems to be that they're so attached to their players, they just. I don't want any other. I want just watch this team grow and become a team and all that kind of stuff like that. And I'm like that to a certain extent. But when you're talking about getting a guy who's already possibly going to be a 40-goal scorer, hitting his prime for 8 to $9 million a year, I'm very interested. All right. Next team we're looking at is the New York Rangers. And this is going to be short. But the reason why I said the New York Rangers in here is because people are very dissatisfied with Capo Cackle. And their right side is slim. They're kind of in the place now where they should be a contender, but they're not. The reason for that is poor five-on-five five play. Everybody in the land knows it. If you're listening to me and you've listened to me before, you've heard me talk about it over and over and over again. It's all over the boards. Everybody knows the stats. Most people do anyways. The New York Rangers do not play well five on five. Timu Meyer would help that a lot. He's a fantastic five on five player. So how is that going to work? And this is why it's probably going to be short. As much as anyone as much as I would love to have them on the New York Rangers, I just can't possibly see how it's going to work for the cap at all. And, but I do have it here because I, I think that San Jose would be interested in tra trading with the Rangers because it's possible that they could get a return 
a decent return out of it. In this situation, the Rangers are going to have to give up players. They have to, to get them. So, and aforementioned Capo Caco would have to be part of the deal. Now, if you think Capo Capo is going to, is going to be as good as Timu Meyer anyways, I suppose you don't do that deal, but how long down the road is he going to be as good as Timu Meyer? If they if the Rangers don't believe that and they want to win now, this is something that could be looked at them. Again, the cap space. And the Rangers fans, I had Rangers fans message me like crazy about this when I was going to do this Timo Meyer video. And you, so I'm putting this out there for you to tell me how are you going to make this cap work. If you think it's going to be Barkley Goudreau going back, I highly doubt it. I don't think anybody but the Rangers are paying him $3.5 million until 2027. Not San Jose. I don't think they have to do this deal. Uh, so you, I'm going to just put it this way. You tell me, New York Rangers fans, what would you do? What would you trade? How would you make that cap work? You got to pick them up now at $6 million. Maybe San Jose will retain for this year. And then you can take them as a rental for this year. How about that? Take them as a rental for this year. And then don't qualify him at the end of the year and let him walk away. If you're going to do that and you give a first round pick for him, I think you get him. If you just want him as a pure rental. Might not be a bad idea. Depends on if you think you're a contender or not. Kreider, Zabanajad, Meyer. Put Meyer on the right side. Take BC, put him down where he's supposed to be. Panera and Trocek should be Kako. I don't know what the heck Goudreau is doing there. Uh, and then the kid line, solid, solid top nine then. And you got a guy that can help you five on five. Tell me what you think, New York Rangers fans. I think it would be a pure rental. Are you willing to do it? Give up your first this year. Uh, you know, I, I think I think San Jose would be very interested because I don't think from the Ducks and from Buffalo, from a lot of teams, are going to get a package that good. Next, Washington Capitals. Washington Capitals, I have them here again. I don't know how the cap is going to work. Let's take a look at their cap. Uh, they'd have to qualify them. And then give them a deal that would work to about $8 million for the next eight years. Why would Washington want to do this? Well, he's only 26 years old. They are not. They don't want to rebuild, but they do want to get younger. They're in that spot. They want to get younger, but they don't want to rebuild. So he's a perfect guy for that. You got a whole bunch of people coming off the books next year. Eller, possibly. You do have to sign Strom. I mean... Don't have to sign Connor Sherry if you don't want to. The whole defense needs to be re-signed. And so in that way, you've got $22 million left. $22 million to fill all the holes that you got to fill, them up, fill up with. So you could sign them and then just sign a whole bunch of $750,000 players all around them. That's pretty much what I think you'd have to do. I don't think you're doing this on a rental because with injuries and everything, Washington doesn't look like they're going to be good enough this year to do something like that. They would have to trade for him and sign him. What the heck am I doing here? And I think they really would want to do this. I think they would want to, want to, want to do this. Maybe they can put Anthony Mantha on here. I think they want to do this because is TJ Oshie ever going to not be injured again? I mean, they, if you're if they're just going to keep on banging this drum of not rebuilding and getting Ovechkin his points and all that kind of stuff like that, not doing a true true rebuild, this is basically the crap they're going to have to do. They're going to have to fill up their top six, sign. Do their bottom six with whatever, like Alexi Protus is and 
Nick Dowds for like minimum and just float through each year. That's, <laughs> I hate to say it any other way than that, but at least he's only 26 years old. Now he would have to agree with this. He would have to agree to sign long term in order to do this deal, I believe. But I believe you could get away get away with trading Mantha in your first in 2023, and that might do it. And you got a 40 goal scorer to go up into your top six. Then you just try to sign whoever you can to fill out your roster. I I know Washington Capitals fans are listening to me going, why don't we just rebuild? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying I could see them do something like this. Do I think it's wise? No, not really. I don't think anything the Washington's doing is wise. So, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Comment in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel, Washington Capitals fans. Let me know if you would do something. I think I know the answer to that question. I think I already know. Pittsburgh Penguins. Yes, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, cap space is the first thing, right? This year, they have no cap space as it stands. San Jose could retain for this year, $3 million. You could put uh, the the uh, doghouse cap in in the deal. Where the heck is he? Uh, let's look at the depth chart. Put doghouse cap in in the deal. And basically, this would be a pure rental. It's possible you could, they could, you could, the Pittsburgh could sign him long term if they don't sign Zucker and they give him $8 million a year. I think that's a very, very possible thing to do. Um, give Kasperi Kapanen back. It says, if you watch the beginning of the video, it's probably only going to cost a first round pick. So, and it might not even be your 2023. 2024 first, get rid of Kapanen. Kasperi Kapanen, they retain maybe a prospect or something, and that's it. I know. Can you believe that? You're getting a 35-40 goal score to try to win now with this, to, which is what Pittsburgh is doing, right? Like, they're not winning, trying to win three, four years from now. This team is not getting any younger. Malkin's 36, Crosby's 35, Carter. It's win now, baby. I'm, I'm calling up and saying, let's make this cap work and let's get Timo Meyer in there. Timo Meyer playing with Crosby and Gunsel? You might have a shot, man. I would do it. I would do it. Give up your first. I don't know where their head is at, but Pittsburgh Penguins fans, what would you do? I'm just, you're not giving up very much. And it's possible you could resign. You could say, if we resign him, we'll give you a second or whatever. You know, you don't get Joe. Zucker's gone. Um, you don't. You just don't bring Zucker back. Damelin, I don't know what you're gonna have to sign him. I guess you got twenty million in cap space. He's gonna cost you eight because you give him. He's got a eleven million dollar qualifying offer, and you downgrade it down maybe eight and a half. Sign Demelin and you got Meyer for a long time instead of Zucker. I I, I would do it. I'm I'm all all I'm all over it, is what I'm saying. Because even if they do have to rebuild down the road, he's only 26 years old. So somewhere down the road, he's still going to be a good player for you. I would do it. New York Islanders, and it's just always about the offense for the New York Islanders. Um, we'll go back to the beginning, and it shows you where it's not going to cost you much for Meyer as far as as far as assets are concerned. Okay. Uh, because he's have to do agree to sign long term. Cap space is a problem for everybody. All of those things like that. Um, I I do believe that the Islanders here though it would it would be a rental, pure rental. Because I don't see. They just don't have the cap space to sign the guy, and it's too bad. It's really too bad because they need him really bad. Timo Meyer, they need him huge. I suppose if Josh Bailey was part of the deal, uh, and now you're doing them a favor. Like as soon as they start doing favors like this to the other team to get a player, 
it's going to cost you more in assets. Um, so it would be Bailey and the first in 2023. And I don't even know if that's going to do it for cap space. Yeah, that would do it. That would do it. Sign them long term. I would do that in a heartbeat. As I'm doing this, I'm starting to wonder if the price is going to go up on him a little bit. Because there's a lot of teams that could do it if they actually wanted to. But I'm just going by what the article says. It's probably going to be a first-round pick. Bailey in a first-round pick, and you get a 26-year-old, 35-goal, 40-goal score to play with Barzo. I'm all over it. I don't know if you guys are. Tell me, Islanders fans, what you think about that. And that's it. Those are the teams. If you have any other teams out there, let me know. Comment in the comment section. We'll talk about it. Tell me also if there's any other players that you would like me to hear me do on a trade video because I love doing this sort of thing, don't you know? And I love talking to you guys. That's really what I do it all about. I like the banter down in the comment section and all of that. Um, but Timu Meyer to all of those teams, would you do it? Uh, do you think that you could get it for that cheap. And who would you like me to do next for Perlo's Trade Extravaganza? It's my 442. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.